last thing that I wanted to go over today is could you use materials to not only deliver drugs, but create new tissues and organs. Here, the person I've worked very closely with is Jay Vacanti. Jay is a head of pediatric surgery at Mass General. And this is a, one of his patients who, uh, I remember Jay coming to me when he was at Children's Hospital in 1983 and showing me that and saying, is there some way we can help these children? Is there some strategy other than just transplantation? Which is what he was doing then. And so we started talking about this and we came up with uh, this following idea, which now is the basis of uh, what people call tissue engineering. The idea, and we published this way before people talked about stem cells, is that you could take virtually any cell type. Here are some shown here. Um, if you try to inject these cells in the body, not much happens. But it turns out the cells are smart. If you put cells close enough together, even in vitro, they can actually reform structures. This was shown actually nicely at Berkeley, where they took mammary epithelial cells, put them close enough together in vitro, they could actually make acini and make milk. Um, so what we did is we, Jay and I, we'd create uh, three-dimensional polymer scaffolds where the cells could be close enough together to reform the structures. Also, the way you grow the cells is very important. It's not just simple tissue culture. You have to have the right stresses and so forth to actually make them grow in the right way. And then you could make the tissue. Just to show you a few pictures, um, we converted these into scaffolds where you'd have fibers and cells. And Prasad Shastri, who was one of my postdocs, he now runs a big institute in Germany, he actually worked out a way using CAD-CAM techniques like computer-aided design to make these into virtually any shape. And then you could use things like three-dimensional printing or various foam techniques to make these in, into different kinds of, of forms. So let me just give you an example, um, and this is pure speculation. But let's say 30 or 40 years from now, somebody comes to a plastic surgeon and they say, we want a new nose. So my speculation is that there'll be a computer screen and you'll have a, you can look at the screen and you can have your choice of 40 different noses, any shape. And to that end, what Prasad did is he worked out ways to make those noses. They're actually three-dimensional, 98% porous, but you could take cartilage cells from the patient themselves, I'll give an example shortly, and make the nose. Now this is kind of like a regular nose, but let's say somebody wants an upturned nose. Well, you just take a little bit of this off. That's not so hard to do. What if somebody wanted a hooked nose? I mean, they probably wouldn't. <laughs> but if they did, we just give them a little bit more. So you could really do these any way you want. To this end, I'll, I'll give you a couple of examples. Chuck Vacanti. Chuck actually was in the newspaper today, worked with us. Uh, and Chuck actually was, was the one uh, with the two people who just had the discovery of how you could give acid to convert certain cells to stem cells. But now we go back to the 1980s when he'd get started working with Jay and myself. And one of the things he did was make new cartilage. And here, uh, with these renewed mice. Here, we redid this guy's skull. Here, this guy's cheek. If you open the animals up and look at them, it's pure white glistening cartilage. Histologically, it also looks like cartilage, but it turns out that the mechanical strength of this cartilage is not as good as you want, say, if you're a runner. Uh, so you're not really able at this point to help people who are runners. But there are various things you can do from a cosmetic standpoint. And actually, recently, what we've been doing is working with the Army. They actually came to talk to Jay and myself and Linda Griffith, who was one of my postdocs, said, could you actually make new ears or other body parts for soldiers who came back from Iraq and Afghanistan? who don't have those parts. And let me just show you a little bit about what was done. Linda, actually, uh, who's now a professor at MIT, made a scaffold in the form of a human ear. You have, uh, this is a scanning electron micrograph of it. Over time, the polymer will dissolve, uh, cells grow on it, and matrix is made. And over time, the polymer will fully dissolve, and you'll just get pure cartilage. And Chuck actually did put this on a rabbit. Here's the rabbit with the human ear. <clears throat> 